Uh, well, good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome uh, the 2023 PGA champion, Brooks Kepka, Brooks Kepka to the interview room. Um, Brooks, um, how are preparations going far, so far this week? Yeah, it's been good. Um, got in Sunday night, so saw a bit of the golf course yesterday. Um, first seven holes and then kind of skipped over. Played, uh, I think, 14, 17, 18. So good nine holes in. Um, pretty much exactly how I remember it. Um, it's a good golf course, fun. You know, Lynx golf I love. So be a good test this week. Okay, we'll take questions from the floor. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Sweet. <laughs> okay, microphone number one. Hi, Brooks. Um, you saw the course once in 2014. Um, how do you reflect on that experience and how does Hoylake set up for you as a course fit? Um, well, probably a little bit different golfer than I was in 2014. Um, but I mean, the course sets up really well. I think it's, um, Lynx golf's all about avoiding bunkers and positioning yourself in the right spot and playing smart and it just comes down to making putts. Um, I think it's a good golf course. Um, I don't think length is a huge advantage out here. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Okay, Bob. Brooks, how's your game compared to where you were at the PGA and during that stretch? Is it, is it the same, or have, have you lost anything or gained anything, or wh how would you assess it? No, I feel like I'm playing just as good. Um, still feel pretty disciplined, um, focused. So um, game's there. I've been practicing quite a bit, so we'll see how the week goes. And I mean, it's a major, so I probably should be up for it. Okay, we'll just go to Rex. Brooks, I didn't hear, do the math correctly. Did you play 17 yesterday? Did you? Yeah. It, new 17, can I just get your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting hole. It depends on the wind. Uh, if you get a crosswind there, that could be pretty pretty interesting. Um, I mean, I'm a big believer in the short par threes. Make it difficult, exactly like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of 260, 250, and, you know, it, it kind of takes – I don't want to say the excitement out of it, but it's kind of boring. You already know it's a three iron, um, and everybody's hitting to the same spot where I think all the best par threes in the world that have ever been designed are, you know, 165 yards or shorter. Um, it's wealth at Augusta, um, Sawgrass. There's, I mean, postage stamp, there's a bunch of them, and you can walk away with five just as easy as you could, too. So um, I like it. Would you hit there yesterday, just out of curiosity, with the wins? Um, I think it was playing a little in, too. I think I hit 9-9. Okay, next question from the front. Uh, hi, Brooks. Just obviously, the, the big topic is still dominating golf is the, the live and the, the, the divide in the sport. We know there's been the peace deal, there's been the, the, the talks, but Rory McIlroy in particular still seems to be quite strident in his feelings towards it. Do you think that some of the feelings have gone so deep that they'll never quite be healed between some of the players or do you think maybe some of the players with reference to Rory maybe need to kind of forget about it and move on? That's probably a question for them. Probably you should ask Rory that. I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for him. Um, I know I've, me and Rory have had quite a, quite a few good talks over the last, I don't know, year, maybe a couple months. But uh, yeah, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, how they feel about it. Um, to me, I, I I don't have enough information on it to even know uh, how to feel, what to what to think, but um, that'll probably be coming in the next few months, I'd say. Do you think there could ever be a time when you could all be friends again, or is it, it seems to be running quite deeply, doesn't it? I mean, I've always been friends with all those guys. Unless I mean, unless they're saying it behind my back, I don't I don't know of anybody that's extremely mad at me. But um, yeah, we've all we've all been friends. We still see each other. Um, I think everybody thinks there's this, you know just because there's a divide with Liv and, and the PGA Tour, that the players are actually divided. And that's, I, I don't think that's the case at all. Okay, the next question, Mike, from number one. Morning, Brooks. Um, just as a follow-on for that, um, obviously with everything that's transpired over the last sort of year, um, what have you learned about yourself? What have I learned? Um, we're going to be a dad, so that's probably a little... Um, Different. I'd say definitely more off the golf course. Um, just getting ready to be a dad, I think, is the main thing. How are you feeling about being, becoming a father? Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm excited for it. Um, it's, been, it's been an interesting few months. Um, I, I just, just prepping for it all. Um, you know, life's, golf's probably going to take a back seat. 
Um, you know, my family will, will take priority, but um, yeah, got to manage my time a little, a little differently, which will be interesting, and um, I'm excited for it. Okay, Doug. Uh, Jenna's doing, Jenna and Kristen McDowell are doing all the prep right now. So I'm just enjoying working for a month straight. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's typical, right? I had two things for you, Brooke. Did you, you played a practice round with Zach yesterday? Yeah. Did the, how did that come about and? Uh, I walked on the first tee right behind Scotty. He didn't have a tee time, neither did I, and neither did Zach, and neither did Cam. So um, there was a good little wait, so we all played. Ryder Cup discussions at all? Yeah. I mean, it was fun. We got to talk about it a little bit, just what's going on, and um, I guess how the team's shaping up. It's, it's kind of interesting. And as it relates to the majors and your and your formula for such great success, um, when did you figure it out? Do you think, as you look back, and what did you learn? Probably the U.S. Open, fourteen, Keimer one, Pinehurst. Figured it out. I wasn't in contention. I mean, like I've said, I think I said this, uh, maybe at the PGA, I wasn't in contention because Martin was so far ahead of everybody, but there was still something to battle for, right? In second place. Um, just the pride of it, but um, just play very disciplined, conservatively aggressive, um, and just stick to the game plan no matter what the situation calls for, whatever situation you're in. Um, just be be as disciplined as you can in, in that and know where to miss it. I think that's what I, that's why I've had such success. It's just um, understanding the moment, the shot, and where it needs to miss. Okay, Sean. Brooks, uh, in LA, you kind of shared some thoughts on course design features that you're not keen for, like blind tee shots. I'm curious if you have much an opinion on internal out of bounds and maybe how it plays into a factor this week. Um, I don't know. We don't really play too many golf courses that have it. So um, I think at the PGA, they had it on six. Couldn't go down seven. Um, obviously, one here on three. Uh, and I guess 18. Uh, but it's fine. Just don't hit it over there. Won't have a problem, right? Sure. OK, Alex in the back. Yeah, Brooks, you said uh, interesting when talking about your discussions with Zach. Can you be a little more elaborative about that? Uh, yeah, it was. Just hearing his perspective and all the stuff he's got to do, um, the PGA of America does a, a really good job in easing it for him, um, and just just kind of talking about the the preparation for it, what uh, what our team's going to do, where where we're going to be, um, and just a little bit more about the, the shuffle of guys and you know the stuff they have kind of behind the scenes stats stuff like that. So it's it's quite interesting. Just hearing about it all because right you just I guess when you look at the the standings or where guys are um, versus you know I guess some events don't count at the end of last year and that, uh, I think everybody knows but if, if you just equate all that is equal where where everybody would stand and just on your game out here what do you think is the the best parts of your game that fit this golf course hopefully all of it I don't know. I'll let you know Sunday. Okay, Mike from number one. Hi, Brooks. Congratulations on the news about soon to be a new dad. Uh, with a mixture of that perspective, with the injury problems hopefully behind you now as well, how do you much do you feel this is kind of the beginning or on, on the back of what happened earlier this year, the ongoing kind of second stage of your career and one you can really kick on and, and really add multiple more majors and really build the rest of your career? Yeah, I don't know if I would look at it as like a second stage in my career. 33, probably right in the middle of the prime. Um, yeah, it's interesting, right? I, I told my team, I think, even when I was hurt, that I was going to give it at least five, seven years of just real hard work and see where um, everything panned out. But I think, you know, the injury and everything that, that went on, it was, yeah, it was frustrating at times and um, wasn't fun to just wake up and, and have to grind. But I kind of I enjoyed the work that's gone into all this, and it's made it a lot sweeter. So I guess my perspective on, on, the, on how to go about it has definitely, uh, definitely changed. Thank you. Okay, the question in the front. Yeah, Brooks, you said you don't 
necessarily know enough about the proposed agreement to, to say much about it. When something like that comes out, is that a situation where you try to find out as much as you can, or you kind of wait for things to play out and then see where you stand? Just let it all play out. It's not, I mean, I don't have no control over anything, so why am I going to worry about something I can't control? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I hear the news, I see the news, and, and just there's a lot of, I don't want to say the rumors, not, maybe not everything is true, maybe this, maybe that. There's a lot of, you know, different scenarios, a lot of what ifs. Um, but it really doesn't matter till everything's definite. Did you have any sort of emotional or, or I guess, what was your first reaction when you found out about it? Um, I mean, I figured it was going to happen. I just didn't think it was going to happen this soon. But um, I think I was just, yeah, more surprised at the timing of it all. OK, the next question from the far left. Uh, Brooks, you talked about uh, being conservatively aggressive. Like, what does that what does that mean when you're out on the golf course, and when do you find your discipline or your game plan being tested? Um, let's just take three for example, right? If the wind's off um, off the left, and the pin's on the right. I'm going to make sure that I miss that left, considering there's internal OB on the right. Um, just picking a good target and sticking with it and being committed. Listen, it might be 45, 60 feet left of the flag, um, where if you're just watching, it might not be a, a great shot or if you don't know much about the situation. It, uh, but to us or to me, it's, it's a really good shot and right where it needs to be, something like that. OK, Neil in the back. Yeah, Brooks, yeah. with all your UK connections, what, what do you like best about coming here? I hear you're a big fan of brown sauce. And also with, Rick is claiming he was a Manchester United fan as well, so I'm not sure how big a fan are you. Have you been to Old Trafford to see them play? Yeah, actually, I had Roy's tickets. Um, well, back in, they're good seats. Um, back in 2000, maybe 14, 15, went to Old Trafford, it was pretty cool. Um, you said, I think it was the week of the Ryder Cup, maybe. Um, I don't know, I wasn't playing clearly. But uh, yeah, way back in the day, used them. It was awesome, had a great time, but yeah. And brown sauce is pretty good, just had some, yeah. <laughs> and how close do you follow Manchester United with all the money you've won over the last year? Are you in for buying them as well? I could use a little more, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a bit out of my price range, but yeah. Okay, John in the front. Brooks, in this um, proposed merger, one of the things that became clear was that Greg Norman's, under the proposal, Greg Norman is likely to be eased out. Do you have feelings of sympathy for that? I know you're going to say it's hypothetical, but how, how did you get on with him? What sort of job do you think he's done? What do you think, what did you think when you saw that his future, if this merger went ahead, would not be, uh, he wouldn't be involved? Like I said, it's a bunch of what ifs and um, scenarios, and nothing's finalized. So, until it's finalized, I mean, you don't count the winner out here on Saturday just because they're at the top of the leaderboard. You wait till Sunday to figure it out. So, when all of it's said and done, um, we'll see what happens. But I mean, I've gotten along great with Greg. Um, obviously, had to um, have more communication with him probably over the last year than I've probably had in the last, you know, five years previous to that, but um, just we're down the same area, so we always um, had communication, pretty good friends with his uh, son, so um, we've, we've been in touch for a while. Do you think he's done a good job? Yeah, I mean, I think he's done fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's all perspective, right? Yeah, wait, your, your perspective is very interesting. Yeah, my, he's done fine. I don't okay. think, you know, from everybody else, um, it's up to them. Everybody's allowed to interpret it different ways. Okay, we've got three questions in the room. We'll take these and then before we finish, um, microphone number two. Thank you, Brooks. Just, um, I just wondered, are you a little bit, like most of us players, a little bit scared about becoming a dad? It's quite a big responsibility. I know I was terrified. Um, and secondly, um, just picking up on your earlier answer, would it be kind of the ultimate sign of friendship, would you be brave enough to ask for Rory's tickets for Manchester United again with everything that's gone on? Do you think you'd have much of a chance? I've hung out with Rory 
for like I said, the last six, eight months. I mean, we still practice together. I've had multiple conversations. We've we talked about a bunch of different things, um, life, um, just off the golf course, and, and he's told me some stuff um, that's gone on with him that, that I really appreciate he's opened up, so I don't see why he wouldn't. Um, and like I said, we've, we've always been friends. But yeah, becoming a new dad, yeah. There's bits of you that are probably a little nervous, and I mean, there's another human being that's going to rely completely on me and Jenna. So, um, yeah, that's it's like anything. It's excitement, but yet a little bit nervous at the same time. Best of luck. I'm here for you if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question in front. I wouldn't trust him. Um, you mentioned taking a bit of time off uh, and maybe ba golf taking a bit of a back seat when you do become a father. Um, do you think that would have been possible or viable or, or even conceivable? before the injection that, that Live Golf brought? Do you think that's kind of part of the attraction is that you, you will be able to take a bit more time and a bit more financial security as well? I just think it comes down to family being first for me. It's all what you, what your priorities are. I mean, if your priority isn't family, I, that's fine. That's cool. But, um, you know, that's where, that's where mine lies. And, and so that, you know, that decision that you made, maybe that was in the back of your head or the front of your head? My even. job has nothing to do with my family. Okay, a final question at the back. Hi, Brooks. Um, this is your ninth Open, and you've had four top tens in the last eight Opens. Uh, you said you love Lynx Golf. Have you managed to play much Lynx Golf leading up to this week? And what is it about your game that allows you to play well at Lynx courses? Um, I think what, what helps me the most is probably my creativity, seeing different shots. I enjoy hitting the... I don't know, I guess it's maybe like showing off with like a little bit of a stinger or whatever, you know, right, as a little kid. I remember practicing at the British, or the guys were over here practicing at the British Open, so I was trying to hit stingers at like 10 years old, even though there's not going to go anywhere. It's Florida, it's soaking wet, and it's going to fly 200 yards and plug, but um, just trying to be like these guys. So I always tried to hit those shots when I was younger. Um, and, you know, came over here with my mom and my brother when I was, pretty young, played St. Andrews, Carnoustie, and um, I think Kings Barnes. Um, and it, honestly, we had, I think, North Berwick, too, we played up there. Um, I just loved it. I thought it was fun. To, like I said, the creativity. You can hit 10 different shots, right? You can hit lob wedge. You can putt it from 80 yards. Um, you can bump and run it with, uh, with some kind of three wood or high rib, whatever you got, or six iron. Like, I, I just think that's doesn't favour one player. Thank you. Okay, we'll bring things to a close there. Brooks, thanks for your time and best of luck this week. Thanks.